Welcome. Welcome to another The Talk to Audrey show. This time, we visit my special guest, Ron Simpson, at his home, away from home, here in Skybox. We're gonna take a look at what happens in his life, the behind the scenes, and how this man has become great. Hey. Hey. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Mm. There you are. We'll do air kisses. Oh. Mm. 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 So much no, makeup sorry. going on. Sorry. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. So thank you for having me today. Super and welcome. Look at this place. I mean, thank <laughs> you for being such a great place. So we're going to talk to you about the man behind Ron Simpson because... <laughs> I was just... <laughs> like... I was thinking, that's because so me. I'm everybody, sorry. Yeah. no, that's all right. I should be prepared. I should be prepared. Listen, I wrote and I, you know, I brought my cards now and then. I wrote and I Googled. Have you ever Googled your own name? You get something different when I Google. <laughs> no, when not. I Google. I never Google my own name. Okay, so here it comes. So that's Ron Simpson, Skybox. Ron Simpson, Avocado Show. Ron Simpson, Assets. Ron Simpson, Instagram, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, and Speaker. Oh, not nothing, bad. nothing super exciting, but tons and tons of stuff. There are so many interviews mm. uh, of you, and they're all um, about business. Many of them are about business. And I've known you uh, for a little bit longer than today also. Yeah. But I have always been interested um, to know what drives you, where you come from. Of course, we talk about foundation, you know, past, present, and future in the Talk to Audrey show. And I'd like to know about and I think everybody else would like to know about what happened and from coming to Tel Aviv to going to, how do you get from Tel Aviv to Niwachain? I can't remember, for those of you, you saying Niwachain, yeah. you fly. I know who decided, but we'll talk about that, about your mom and dad, um, unbelievable. I think it's 48 years of marriage now? Apparently it's a lifestyle choice. Like it's love a, is a lifestyle choice. Yeah. It's a, that's a good one, I've never heard of it like that before. You even wrote a book about it. I wanna hear about the whole foundation of the family. Okay. So we're gonna do it in three parts. We'll do the foundation about you know, where you come from. And I think that what happens is that your foundation determines also and lays a, you know, the groundwork for who you're going to be, maybe even sometimes the, the way you think, although I know you're not a box thinker. So True. compared to, you know, a brother and a sister who you also have. And then I'd like to, you know, wander around a little bit in this amazing location. You're welcome. And go to the office. Thank you. And even sit down and have a continuing talk. So um, looking forward to Let's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's start. So do you remember what life was like before you were not on Google? Before I was not on Google, wow. Uh, I, I can't remember the day I went on Google, so I have no idea mm -hmm. when that really happened. But yeah, I mean, it was just you know, kid like anyone else. Mm. Um, born in Tel Aviv. Tell us born in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Born in the sun. Mm. Uh, I think I loved it there, but I was like so young, you I have no young. idea. It just, you know, whenever I think back of it, it has fond memories. And, um, and I literally feel warm when I think about it. So mm. that's a good thing. Um, and I'm the youngest, so I have a brother and a sister and amazing parents, and we were born there, and um, my father's English, and they were discussing, like, hey, do we grow the kids up here? Um, should they be part of this whole uh, army thing, or do we mm. move out, or what is it exactly that we're trying to do? And my father had the chance to um, get another job within the same company, so he took a promotion in a different country. And what was he doing? He worked for a company called NCR, which is now AT&T, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was like in you know, automatization and working on software and cash machines and Lord knows what exactly. But that's the type of stuff he did. And that was, you know, getting global. So it was kind of easy to move around. And so he did. And he got a job. I believe it was in Amstelfein. Mm -hmm. And then they located him in Nieuwegein. So, you know. That Could have been New York, but it was Tel Aviv, New York. Yeah, yeah. For some of the people, how far is it from Amsterdam? It's like around the corner. It's half an half hour an drive. Hour. Yeah. yeah, it's like forty yeah. kilometers. That's a great. And mom, at that time, what was she doing? Was she a homemaker, taking care mom of Mom by then right? was a homemaker. She's a mm -hmm. um, uh, wow. She was a therapist that worked with disabled children for a very oh, long wow. time. And uh, also, when we grew up, she picked that up again, and started doing that. But yeah, so she was just home a lot and taking care of us. It's interesting you said that because it's such a special job, both of your parents, and of course, then welcome to expat life. You're mm -hmm. an expat. Um, does, are they your advisors also? Do you ever go to them for business or not no, at all? I or go, you're like, I go stay see away my parents from that for, for parents. love and fun. And attention and home cooking. Yeah, that yeah, is it. Yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. Funnily enough, okay. my father, as far as I, I don't really talk business to him a lot, but as far as we discussed work, he was always like, you know, work is a means for living. It's not anything else. Ah. So um, I never had the feeling he was very much talent or career driven. He was more like survival driven. Like, you know, you need a job to take care of things, um, which he did amazingly. And uh, for me, it was just a different thing because I had this urge to create. And, and so my whole life revolved around that. Mm -hmm. And as life usually revolves around work or what you do type of thing, then, you know, those two came together. Did that make you difference? Because how many years of difference age between your sister or your brother? There's about three years in between us all. Mm. So six years between me and my sister and three years with my brother. Oh, yeah. Very practical. You know? Very practical. Very practical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've read and I've heard and I always say I only believe moving images that mm. you thought of yourself as kind of like out of the box kid different. Are you... That different um, from the way they are? Is it because you're younger? Oh, from our brother and sister? You yeah. Mean? Actually, we're not that different. At least me and my sister are sort of the same type. Mm -hmm. um, and my brother is like a, uh, the perfect opposite of us, which is great because, you know, it balances out and it creates this perfect thing. But he's way more uh, emotional and, some, and, and emphatic and, and whatever. You know, he, he has all the feelings and all the... Uh, patience in the world are you impatient i'm not impatient i'm direct and i'm fast and i'm quick mm -hmm. and i'm true um you know on the go a lot so mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that i'm impatient but he takes his time to smell the roses and, mm -hmm. and you know that is something i can be je positively jealous about yeah. like i love that about him and um and he's very family driven actually so is my sister but it's it's just it's balance. I mm -hmm. think he, he got the other side of the coin, but then together we're one. So that's good. How does a son raised by a British father? Yes. And your mom was born in Tel Aviv or not? Uh, yeah, she's Israeli. Yeah. She's Israeli. Where did you get an American accent? <laughs> TV. You, you watched like Mork and Mindy or your no, it's, it's, it's like It's super younger. random. Actually, this, this, we were just figuring out how much impact television had yeah. on me as a kid also because... You must imagine that growing up in, in Tel Aviv, even if you're like five or six, you speak some Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And because my dad's British, I spoke a little bit of English. But then arriving in the Netherlands with zero Dutch, mm -hmm. um, there was a very simple choice to make. And that choice looked like a minor decision, mm -hmm. but actually changed everything. Because while everyone at school was watching Delicates or RTL or all the Dutch programs, right? I was watching... MTV, Nickelodeon, ah, Comedy Central. Really? And so not only, uh, because I could understand a little bit of English, yep. so that worked for me. And yep. so not only did that uh, help me speak better English, mm -hmm. but it also gave me a totally different perspective because all the kids at school were watching something else. So I was like the only one, like, what are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. didn't you see this cartoon? No. And, they had no and idea. the other way around, they're like, didn't you see the Yerkturnal or like the news here for kids? Mm -hmm. Like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't understand it. So I wouldn't watch it. And that, I think right there is where it already started to part me from the rest of the group. Right. So I was always getting different information. And um, because I was watching different music and different things, I wanted different things. Mm -hmm. Literally, the, you know, as a kid, you're watching these artists' music videos. Yeah. You want different clothes. You're, yeah. you're, you want different sounds. You What's want, you want to go to different to places. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I had this obsession like with New York when I was younger and everything because I was just watching American television. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And especially if you're talking about MTV in those days, I had the privilege and honor to interview uh, Adam Curry a long time, uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And I remember he said the same thing. And that's why I love the foundation because it is very for myself. And I think and I hear from you. It is so important. We don't think about what happened during those young years enough. We're so in the moment. At least I'm not sure if you think about it. You're talking about the time that you, you know, went to New York. I know you love to travel yeah. and things like that. Obviously, um, you have a background. Suddenly, we're talking about, uh, you know, we don't like the word. At least I don't think it's a nice word for women. Fixer. You don't so, think it's a nice word? I don't know. I don't know. It maybe for guys it's different, but fixer. I mean, I, I, people have called me that also. But in our jobs, you know, we make sure we get things done. I think we shouldn't concentrate too much, maybe, on the word and more on what we're doing. Mm. So it is. A, it is a good thing. But what I wanted to lead to is is then you came into the music world and you came into the, the the whole party world and the whole different things. Tell me about. It's a big jump. 
You're yeah. going from, from Tel Aviv, you're going to Nieuwegein, then you're going to, is it Nieuwegein slash Utrecht, and then Amsterdam? First Nieuwegein, then Utrecht. Then and Utrecht and Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, obviously, when you come to a big city uh, than Amsterdam, I mean, Tel Aviv is, is right now is booming and has always had Definitely. a great life. Uh, I've been a long time ago. Um, is that a natural transgression? It was a curiosity, probably. The music, the, the life, the vibe, what you saw? I just ran out of stuff. You ran out of stuff. I ran out of stuff. So, out of stuff. so what was again, the first? Even going back to, to the, the whole TV thing, right? Uh -huh. When you watch these artists wear clothes and stuff, and then you go to the local store and you can't buy them, ah. then you have a choice. Either you adapt and, and buy in the local store what everyone else is buying, mm -hmm. or you need to figure out, is there more to life? But even at that young age, and even that with something as simple as a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time I was like, oh, maybe Nieuwegein doesn't have it. And so I need to go, what's bigger than Nieuwegein? And then you end up in the next big city, which is Utrecht. Mm -hmm. So I went there, and then all of a sudden, there was not one or two stores. There was like, hundred stores and there are specialist stores mm -hmm. and there is a store that imports American stuff music mm -hmm. and and, um, and outfits and whatever and so now all of a sudden I feel very connected because something I saw that I liked as a kid and I couldn't make it buy it or get it I had to go out and fix that ah, issue right so that's where the whole entrepreneurial thing started and that's why I went from Nieuwegein to Utrecht because it just had more options mm -hmm. Now, as you evolve and grow older, um, even the things I was looking at weren't available in Utrecht. So now, what's the next best thing? So you move up to Amsterdam, and I was just literally, I, I came here every single day. I used to live in Utrecht. Really? I was here every day for years. Wow. Every day up and down. How long did it take you to move here? From um, well, it, it's kind of a tough move. So I had to get my first job and, um, and like buy a house to be able to live here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think... God, how old was I? I think I was like 24 or something when, mm -hmm. I, when I finally moved here. Mm -hmm. I think I started coming here when I was like 20. Mm. Not before that, actually, but after my 20th, it was, I was here every day. And you, so it was euphoria when you came here. You were like, hallelujah, I'm here. Yeah. And now I'm in the middle of everything. And you dove right in and started, you know, fixating things. I mean, I know you've done huge parties for uh, international artists and things like that. Yeah. I mean, I have a feeling that is it because of being uh, an expat and chameleon that you have life and you adapt really quickly? So now you're like, okay, you're here. If you need this, you need that. That might be part of it. I think it's also um, whatever your horizon is, right? So to me, everyone gets uh, a scale of thinking mm. by whatever it is that you do. You just, you know, your parents, your surrounding, whatever you read, whatever you watch, whatever they teach you gives you a scale of thinking. Mm. And once you meet someone that opens a door or you see a concept or you read a book or whatever, it takes you to the next level. And I think by chance, simply by chance, I was introduced to a, like a, a leap that was so big because I was literally watching New York as a kid. So it mm. wasn't... There's the know, next city. <laughs> there's the next city and you're not taking baby steps anymore. You're no. like fixated on going straight to the top in those days, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that was kind of an interesting thing. I came in Amsterdam and then when I was here, people were doing amazing things, but I was still getting my input and my inspiration from like the number one city in the world back then. Mm -hmm. And so I always wanted more. I always wanted to, to get on that level. To me, mm -hmm. that was the Champions League and that was what I was competing against. It wasn't whatever was here that wasn't interesting to me. So all my ideas were like on a global scale. You dream big. Right? Dream big, biggest city. Dream you know? it, do it. Right. Yeah. And, and so if that is normal to you, if you've been watching uh, American scale ideas. I hear you. Yeah. Since you were a kid, then nothing scares you, really. Mm -hmm. True. As a matter of fact, you think a lot of things are small. And so you try to make it bigger and better and whatever. And that's, you know where this whole wave came from. Oh, that's interesting. I recognize, I love that you think that way. It also for young kids and for young professionals and even for, you know, people with older, like a little bit like my age, they moti are motivated by realizing that there's no such thing as a border. You know, you dream big, you do big. And I'd love to talk more about that. And I'd love to see where the magic happens in the office. <laughs> you want to see okay. the office? Yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Let's go to the office. Let's go up there. So we're in the office. 
We are. Where yeah. everything happens. Listen, this view, we're on the 13th floor? 13th floor. 13th floor. Okay, we won't get there. It brings, brings you luck. It brings you all kinds Definitely. of luck. Definitely. Absolutely. Where are we? This building is amazing. The Atom Tower. Um, I would like to know, obviously, uh, in, a, in a couple of seconds, more about Skybox. But mm. I also would like to know, um, in business, in professional life, did you ever make a bucket list? In business? Both. Because yeah. I have one for business and professional life. I don't know about you. I just have one. You just have one global involves one. involves business and yeah, yeah. fun Mush, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's on it? <laughs> uh, what is still on it or what was on it? I, I'm, that was my next question. What's um, on it and how many of you, you know, how many of you been able to check off? There's a few things that I've been able to check off, I mm -hmm. think, which was interesting. Like, uh, there's a few commercial ones, like, you know, your first million dollar idea or making um, something that actually expands into the world, like internationally, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting, or like a global concept. These type of things were always on my list, which is fun. Um, and then, you know, business-wise, there's still, how could we make... You know the, the highest amount of impact. How can we uh, teach a hundred thousand kids something or whatever mm -hmm. that is still on there? Um, total independence and freedom is still on there. What what's total independence freedom financially or in in different ways? I think so. To me, um, I try to shape my business and my life in a way that I can be creatively free mm -hmm. and do things the way I see them. So really. What I envision, I would love to become reality. And to do so, I need to understand exactly what I'm good at. Like stick very close to your genius. Get a team around it that accepts that and can actually enhance the rest. Um, and then make sure everyone can survive off of that simple thing. It's a lot right. of responsibility. It is, but it, I mean, it's the only way to do it, really. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's independence is also being able to do what you want to do autonomously mm -hmm. so it's not just about the money at all is there are there private advisors in your life and Tons. i'm not just saying so oh yeah. there are a lot of people because usually yeah i mean how do you differentiate between who you really listen to or is there someone you talk to regularly or you know i talk to a to lot you? of people i think mm -hmm. i think for me people don't necessarily advise or mentor me that much mm -hmm. they mostly inspire me and they, they do their thing, which then inspires me. So right. I don't really run into a lot of problems I can't fix myself. I run right. into challenges, how to do this, or I need something I don't have. Mm -hmm. That is different. But usually I don't, I don't talk to people in a way that they, like, please mm -mm. mentor me or advise me. I'm like, hey, what do you do? And I try to learn from that. How do you see the world? I try to learn from that. Mm -hmm. Travel a lot and then see how they do it anywhere else and what can I learn from that? Mm -hmm. So to me, it's always been, you know, everything and everyone is a possible teacher. It's just Nicely up to me said. to figure out when, when do I need advice? When do I think an idea is sound? You know, when does it really work? Mm -hmm. And then we go from there. Otherwise, only, only financial people can actually advise me on a... That's true. That's, that's, you know, you know, that's something I, I really don't understand. Cold, hard that. facts kind of type yeah. thing, just like legal advice. I think it's important. Going back to that bucket list, that's the business one. Yeah. What's the private bucket list? Well, I wanted to see the world. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've done a lot of that. We haven't finished, so I definitely want to see more of that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to set up something that impacts. That's very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm a happier person when I give and I feel like I'm a happier person when I help or create or facilitate or whatever. You're known for it. Also, but it's, I mean, it's also... It's, it's it, give and, and, you know... That's yeah, you that's just how I, I, I be happy. So mm -hmm. um, to me, that's very important. There are many ways of doing that. And you can do that on a family level, a friend level, a stranger level, an entire generation, whatever. It just mm -hmm. scales up. The road, right? So. It's interesting because I ask you um, for the private bucket list, except I hear, and it's normal, a kind of a business undertone still, because I don't know about you, but how do you not do business when you travel uh, by yourself? How do, does the laptop, does the phone stay on? I know it's glued to your, <laughs> to your hip, <laughs> yeah. your hand. No, it does, but it's, it's not, um, I don't see myself doing business all the time. I see myself creating all the time. Ah. That's where the difference is. There you go. And sometimes it's for business and a lot of times it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and on a personal bucket list, I think I would love to start a family and do these type of things as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that is not 
my day-to-day, hour-to-hour thing. No. That's the big dream for me. Right, right. And the small dreams are, are easier to create. Mm-hmm. So we do that. I yeah. can see if you, you know, have little ones, uh, little Rons and Ronettes, and they'll probably end up being in the company or not at all. I actually, I, I actually think that once that day comes, it'll flip me completely. I think so too. Completely. Yeah. I don't think anything else will matter and I'll just start creating for them. And interesting also. I think that, you know, having such a responsibility, the reason I, why I love um, having the chance to talk to you is because when you are so much in the public eye as you are as a businessman, as an advisor, because I know that Skybox, and that's what I want to flow into, um, is a professional academy. I mean, mm-hmm. darn, I wish it would have. Uh, are people like me too old? How does that work? No. You know, it's a, it's inclusive. I know it is. And it is. It's just for it's, young professionals, uh, professionals. I don't think it's, I think it's just for ambitious people mm. at the end of the day, right? Right. And professionals because it's, it, it does link to business or growth or skill sets, but mm-hmm. it doesn't matter to me. I think a young professional is not necessarily age driven. Mm-hmm. It could also be someone who just started a business. Ah. You are still young in your profession, right? It, it's just... So it's for young professionals, it's for professional youngsters, it's for young-minded professionals, whatever, figure it out. <laughs> there we go, just new tagline, new tagline. Yeah, no, I just think you know it should right. be for everyone and it should be accessible to everyone. Mm-hmm. Everyone should be yeah. able to connect with people mm-hmm. that are like-minded. Everyone should be able right. to be inspired by things they didn't see coming. That's right. Those are the best. Yeah, well right? said. If you're a creative, I can put you in a room with 100 creatives, but that's not gonna change anything. I should put you in a room with a, a lawyer, a rabbi, and a, you know, whatever. So that's when, once you change the rules and you meet different people that you wouldn't necessarily handpick mm-hmm. and you learn or hear about topics that you would never click on, mm-hmm. that's when you discover new things. That's how adventure starts, not by doing what you know. I think it's really interesting, first of all, what you say and what you provide, and, and maybe you'd like to kind of outline Skybox, obviously, what it is besides, um, you know, just the new way I consider it of learning and Mm. also more direct learning because you have seminars, you have great inspirers, you've got Harvard professors, you've got all kinds of people coming in. Tell us how, um, you know, if somebody without reading a whole website, what are the three things that someone needs to know? Okay, I need to now contact and become a member or at least, you know, yeah. Well, I think we do three things, and we just do them very well. That's you know the basic of any any business, I think. And the first thing is we want to inspire the future, which is a big goal of mine, personal goal of mine. So um, we took that into the company as well. So we create content which just shares amazing stories um, that are packed with tips and tricks and tools and knowledge and insights and all this kind of stuff, right? So. We make that freely available to everyone. You can just follow us online, get everything for free. It's All no right. problem. We'll That's put the just, link in uh, the it's YouTube. It's just a mission, right? Right. Um, and then we found out, like, okay, but at a pro level, if you are ready to upgrade everything about your life um, and you want more and you want to be better and you want to be connected and you want all these things, it's possible. But you need to put in work. It's not a... You don't buy it. It's 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 not one afternoon. It's sort of like a gym membership. Is it right? homework? How does it work? No, it's not homework. No. Okay. Um, so to me, it's it's more like a gym thing. Mm-hmm. You can go to the gym once a year and think you're in shape. My muscles are getting stronger, right? right. So, <laughs> um, but however, it it needs to be a lifestyle. You need to eat properly and go regularly to mm-hmm. do that. So I think personal development, whether that's business or actually personal requires you to create a lifestyle and we understand that it's hard and i also understand that everything that used to be out there is still out there about learning um compared to whatever we have right now is boring like how do you put a book next next to netflix right how do you put a course next to adventure you know it's just tough so we decided to not look at the old school way look at the new way Mm -hmm. and say okay we're going to add entertainment and nightlife and all these things to learning, to getting right. connected. That's where it happens. It's exciting also. It's exciting. And, and the other thing is we are adding people. This is no secret. We've seen this for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Like all content in the world um, performs better when people are in it, right? Right, right. We, we like more pictures with people. We want to listen to people or actors or 
master class or whatever. So a book versus a person? Obviously, there no brainer. So, yeah. yeah, so so besides free events, we have, uh, sorry, besides free content, content, we have events that we put together like a year program. You need to do at least one every quarter. Just get inspired by whatever the topic is, mm -hmm. creative, business, future, right, you've society, got five, right? yeah. you know, whatever, personal. Um, and then that already enables you like, okay, four times a year, I'm going to get connected to 100 people. That's wow. more than most people learn or uh, connect that's with. That's a in, promise in, in you, get, you, you make or that's kind of what That's happens? literally how it works. We have yeah. 100 people at an event. Your phone's going to be like, if you're going to be a, a member, mm -hmm. you, you meet four times 100 people. Mm -hmm. So that's going to connect you. Right. And they're all different from different industries and things. Major companies, starters, entrepreneurs, athletes, whatever. So that gets you connected. The stories that we put on stage, like the speakers and stuff, could be a Harvard professor, could be someone you have no idea about, but they have like TED, TED level ideas. Right. Also great, inspire me, mm -hmm. you know, and then we discuss that with all these people in the room. Mm -hmm. So this is what you do. You buy a membership. Every quarter you get at least one of these events. Mm -hmm. And one time a year we do like this big ass party. Big party. Yeah. yeah. Why did, why not? I mean, <clears throat> obviously timing is everything, but why yeah. has this not existed before? I mean, it's great that you guys are doing it. But what was, I mean, you noticed things were missing because that's yeah. how great things are created. Well, I think it's a timing thing. So mm -hmm. before, whenever you needed to grow, you would just use the old versions of it, right? Mm -hmm. You would go get a course, you would go sit for two days in, in some place that'll teach you things or you yeah. would get a book. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think we compete with that at all. I think we are competing for attention, which means TikTok and Netflix and all these other things that yeah. are our social life in the content game. Mm -hmm is just really grabbing everyone's attention and time. Right. And it takes a lot of time. And it does. And But like, even if you would be inspired for one minute a day, mm -hmm. if I could send you like this funny story or interesting insight one time a day, mm -hmm. even if you would skip five in a week, you, I would only reach you twice. That's still a hundred times you get inspired. Right. And there it is. And you need to systematically set yourself up for that. Because otherwise, you're going to systematically set yourself up for another social media, you know, binge. Yeah, right. It's it's almost, it's, it's the new way of brain training. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, it's great. But we play the same game instead of yeah. trying to say, oh, no, social media is bad. and Netflix. No, content is amazing. Just make amazing content yeah. that teaches you there something. There you go. You'll be you're fine. evolving. Are you taking this across the border? We will. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing a little Europe tour. We're doing Copenhagen and London and Paris and a few other stops. So a little tour, just, yeah, a little just a little tour, tour, a little tour. With Citizen M, big fan. Ah, amazing, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. actually, you know, we try to look at these entrepreneurs and concepts and brands that we yeah. would give a stage at our events, uh -huh. and now we get to work with them. So yeah. no. that's amazing. amazing. So we get to go do that. Yeah. And actually, we're just trying to prove the blueprint. If it works here, mm -hmm. if we can get an X amount of members with an X amount of events and do the content and make it profitable, mm -hmm. but also winning for everyone, mm -hmm. then we can move that and do it in German and French and Italian and, you know, whatever. Gosh, I don't know when you're going on holidays, <laughs> but I think you need to do it quickly because yeah, you're but that sounds so like holiday to me. It's, that's, I mean? that's what you said. That's what you said. I, I love it. I know there are, obviously, there are more, many more companies. I like to think about, you know, your past, your current uh, situation in the future. Yeah. I'd like to go, uh, let's go down and see uh, Amazing Skybox and uh, sit down and talk about what's heading more for the future. Let's do it. So now we're in the core, what I consider the core of Skybox, because I think this location in, uh, you know, in the Adam Tower is amazing, the view. You literally kind of have a view of, of the world to me. You're on top of the world <laughs> over here. That's the way you think. Um, I know you're also someone who has huge ideas, great, dream big. Are you sometimes afraid maybe that there's not enough time to do everything you want to do? Um. No, I'm not really afraid of that because that's a fact. Mm. It's not something I doubt about. There is not enough time to do everything I want to do. And that is simply motivating. It gives you a compass, a better mm -hmm. uh, understanding of when to say yes and no. Oh, wow. 
So you are, how often do you do that? Think about, you know, what you say yes or no to. Daily? Daily? Yeah. Yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah, every day. I mean, we get good ideas in here. We meet amazing people with great ideas all the time, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I even have a website. And, well, that's not true. I even have a, like a domain name mm -hmm. that says ideasainshit.com. <laughs> Everybody look it up right now. Because, yeah, there's nothing on it yet. <laughs> I just wanted to own it. Um, because I needed to remind myself, like, ideas are cool, but they, they're, like, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. It's execution that matters, right? So, mm. um, to me, it's like, I'll say yes to any idea, mm -hmm. but I'm very weary of saying yes to execution because that's when time goes. Right? So, wh where's the difference be in between? Where's the time in between? You can say yes, and the execution, does that mean you I, wait? I can say, yes, let's discuss this idea. Ah. Yes, let's turn it into a concept, or mm -hmm. let me help you think it through or position it or brand it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I would say no to executing the thing. You would have to find another partner or another team or whoever to actually make it his or hers day to day. I bet I people don't like that. They want you to execute it. Yeah, but they can't you. get me all the time. No, I know. That's, I know. that's you yeah. know, the, the issue. So people don't like a lot of things. You just need to show them how it's possible. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm not the best executor in the game. Ah, so you have and one. Once you understand that, right. you won't be mad anymore. No, right? I understand. Yeah. You've got one speciality. Everybody's usually got one. Doesn't mean they can execute. Exactly. Mm. I can concept. Mm. That's what I do. Yeah, I remember something about a bike and a pen and a little book. Ah. <laughs> Hulk slogan. Hulk slogan. Yeah. Tell me about. I mean, for everybody now that you know just got to know you, that's going to be your name for this month. You Hulk know? slogan. Nah, How it's did just that... about you know, it's about not knowing how to create anything but brands. So mm -hmm. even when you want to be a copywriter, mm -hmm. you create a brand. In that case, it was Hulk's slogan because I wanted to show that I can put humor in copy. Right. Um, so whenever you know I come up with a restaurant, it's going to be, it's not going to be a restaurant. It's going to be a brand, right? The Avocado Show has right. brand assets. It, right. it sells merchandise, not just food. So, um, and whenever I want to do, I don't know, something like an academy, we're going to name it Skybox and it's going to be more and more. So, that's a concepting part of me that you can find in absolutely everything. Right. It's yeah. a way of life also, because obviously we're, we've been talking about Skybox, which is amazing. I mean, the avocado show went viral completely all over the world. And it's, it's almost a way of life because I'm, I was thinking the other night, I thought you must not like one avocado at all. Do you eat avocados at all <laughs> I anymore? Do, yeah. Oh, you still do? Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm saying. If you're not day-to-day -day involved mm. with execution. Right, okay. You know, you, I, I you let it go? I, love, I absolutely love the concept of the avocado show. Like, I would tell it to people the rest of my life, I think. I, right. I just love it. Right. I would, don't think I would love, you know, the idea of running restaurants every day no, good as point. a person because I would not be creative enough. But right. I, the concept, yeah, love uh -huh, it to uh -huh. this day. Yeah. Do you watch um, Young Talent? Do you yeah. secretly, I mean, obviously constantly you're it's watching. It's not secretly at all. No, it's, I'm very and I know. blunt and open. And, and I know. Do you, do you invite them in? What happens? Not that everybody's every going to call you every day. Yeah, I just yeah. love to be surrounded by people with this energy, this creating energy. Mm-hmm. And I also think that um, a lot of people with great ideas or great skills or whatever just got missed because they never got um, promoted enough. And heard. And yeah. heard or seen yeah. or whatever. So I think it's important to you know, put these people together. If, you, if I discover something that I really love, mm -hmm. why would I only post a picture of a piece of art in a museum mm -hmm. and not an upcoming artist? Right. That makes no sense to me at all. No, so well said. I do both. Right. If I find something that's inspiring, I share. Mm -hmm. That's Skybox. Mm. Literally. That's, that's the perfect way. And like I said, I said, I'm glad it, you know, it still exists. I'm looking at the chairs and we're sitting on, on one of the stages and things like that. Is there, um, you know how successful people such as yourself, um, I remember when I was young, I was watching that from the beginning. Is there, do you have a mantra? Do you have something you do every morning? Is there something that comes through? <laughs> I don't have <laughs> uh -oh. a... <laughs> I don't have a mantra. I don't do affirmations. I don't do any of those no. things. I do. I mean, if you do, go ahead. Whatever floats your boat is fine mm -hmm. with me. But I love it when a feeling can be explained in the least amount of words. Oh, I love wow. it when you find a word or a sentence or a quote that really sets you on fire. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, I was... People were always describing to me like, hey, you have this, you know, undying energy. There's always, you always want to move. You always want to go. 
you don't let yourself be blocked by anything, negative thoughts or challenges or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was always a story. Mm -hmm. And now in Dutch, there's this thing um, where they say, alles kan, which means everything is possible, but mm -hmm. in too many words, right? Mm -hmm. That is my mindset. I wake up in the day and think, we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Oh, I love that mindset because it's the way I live also. And people always think, you know, I ask, what's your dream? That's my first person. I ask it to the Uber driver and whatever, and they look at me and they say, I'd like to, you know, uh, make sure I stay healthy and raise my family. I go, yes, really. And I, I ride a lot in Ubers and taxis for traveling and everything. And, and I go, but what's really your dream? And they look at me like, some people think that the concept of doing what you love and Alas Khan is so far away that they don't have access to it. Yet Alas Khan can, can start with a with something really simple. So I love it. You know what my word for you is? What would that be? Vibe. Vibe. I yeah. swear it. Every time I meet you, you're besides, I mean, that's too many words. Well, actually, no, one word's teddy bear. But <laughs> no, I, I think you give off a, cer a certain vibe to everyone that you meet. And that's the, the way I, you know, I reached out to you a couple of years ago. And when we connected and have been connected since, and it's, um, it's a vibe I can learn from. It's a vibe that I listen to. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, we're not making commercials for vibe right now, but I, I think that's really, do you notice that also? Because people must ask you all the time for everything. Yeah. But I, I think vibe is a very interesting word because it gets, uh, everyone loves it, but at the same time it gets misunderstood mm. every day. Mm. A lot of people think a vibe is in a room, mm -hmm. but vibe is short for vibration, which means there's a source, right? There's a. A person comes in and changes or sends Movement. energy out. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you are in a good mood and you feel right and you're having fun and you're smiling all day, you notice that. You know that everyone that touches your aura or your True. space will feel that vibration. And to me, like I don't go to places because of a vibe. Mm -mm. I go to people because of their vibe. I really get attracted to people with the right vibe. That's what I mean. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, to me, that's a real big compliment. Thank you. And, and You're welcome. It is from I love heart. bringing that. And that is something I protect also. Even on the down days when you don't feel like it, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just understanding that if you stay in that energy, your vibration is going to affect everything and everyone. Mm -hmm. So even if you can't do it for yourself, mm -hmm. even if you can't say like, yeah, I'm just having a bad day, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. If you would walk into a room with 10 people, that to me is enough to say, okay, well, no matter how I feel today, we need to get back in the good vibe. There you go. And that's how I, I roll. There you go. Basically. It's in the person. So I want to, let's take a sip because I know we've been talking all that. Mm, water. Cheers. I don't know if that's possible. Mm -hmm. So I have some final things and it's, uh, it's old school. You know it already. I'm going to mention some, um, ask some words and, and some favorites and also some words. Okay, so I've been saying it all this afternoon. Cologne, what are you wearing? <laughs> he smells um, so good. <laughs> that's another thing I really love, you know, whether it's young artists or young makers. Uh -huh. This is uh, called Perfume One. Oh, wow. By Fugazi. Okay. Um, very young guy called Bram, amazing friend. He makes this. He, oh, I love I, it. I, I, I have to tell Bram you the story. Bram smells delicious. Go ahead, I tell me. I have to tell you the story. <laughs> it's it's uh, someone whose dad is quite big in the... Um, cosmetics industry mm -hmm. so he's he's affiliated but he didn't know that much about it because um, he was still a kid he went to uh, Egypt where obviously the old essential oils, oils. were made right mm -hmm. which make really good perfume but they're very expensive and he learned the story or actually the myth mm -hmm. of how Caesar Julius Caesar fell in love with Cleopatra uh. because she was the only person in that time smelling good and he was part. surrounded by unbathed sh soldiers yeah. you know what i mean like so when she entered a room that would it's like that entering was it. heaven that you know was what I mean? it and so simply by that story he got inspired and he said i want to make perfumes that change the room when you walk <laughs> he did he did it yeah. smells good i've been going what's that yeah, all day did, yeah. well shout out to bram Definitely. Well, we'll put him on there somewhere um, so, okay, so that's not a sponsor commercial thing because we're doing some, some brand things. It's discovery. What, what's it's your just... favorite drink? 
Um, Could be any type of drink. I would go for champagne. Uh huh. Yeah, and not just trying to be a snob asshole, but I love the fact that champagne's for everybody who likes it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for me, I I love the fact that it got married Mm -hmm. to celebration. Oh wow! There's a. You know what I mean? Like the tradition of Um, whenever something good or amazing happens, that's when you cry. So whenever I see. A bottle of champagne. You associate it. It with just takes me back to everything I, everything I ever celebrated. You just planted that seed in my brain. It's true. Yeah, I never thought about that way, but that's your your forte, your quality. It's funny because my next word sneakers. Oh, <laughs> I think sneakers are fun. I, I cannot. Um, Is it something you wear all day? You wear. You wear. I don't think I've seen you in anything else ever. I have quite a shoe collection, mm-hmm. not just sneakers, but um, yeah. I think. I think I, I I wear them also because I cannot imagine that at one point there was a time in the world where you were not allowed to, when it was not done to wear sneakers to work, oh. and they're the most comfortable shoes in the world. So why on earth True. were we bugging ourselves for you know status or image uh-huh. versus you know yeah. be you and be comfortable? I'd put my fragos on for you, but my sneakers are in my bag right there. (laughs) I I love it. I I don't think there's something wrong with dressing up. Mm. I think everything has its uh, reason. I love putting on a tuxedo and going Mm, somewhere. But um, in general, I want to feel comfortable and I want to express myself with something that I feel is right. True. And I I can't understand that there was a a time in life where that was not allowed. And so it reminds me to never... Um, you know, to never accept anything like that ever at all. I've, I've got so much stuff to think about after this uh, interview. <laughs> okay, so I can't say favorite person, but I can say person. Mm-hmm. You know, think, yeah, who's your person? Who's my person? Poof. I don't have a person. I have people. And I know that's oh, not wow. the answer you're looking for, but it's, Favorite, yeah, people. They're they're really special people. Like, yeah, I can love you for some, for even one thing you have or mm. do or said or mm-hmm. whatever. And I think I have a lot of love to give, and I connect with a lot of people. You do, and all of them for a different reason. So you know, I I would be broken if any of them uh, leave. So, That's nice. Yeah, favorite people once again. Um, fun speaker. Who is a fun speaker? There are so many, but I know. There's There's got to be one that pops up. Well, the one that inspires me the most, actually, at this point, is Anita Elberson. She's the Harvard Harvard professor, professor. but she gets enough credit in the world. I don't think we... That's great. What what, uh, what makes her special? What made her special? You had her over here. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, she just figured out... She figured something out, which I think is amazing. Like, if you want to... encourage people to be enthusiastic and interested in what you do, you need to find a form of telling them things. That's what we do here at Skybox. Actually, she she mostly inspired the whole thing. It's just like she teaches um, Beyonce. And I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about she actually teaches you the business case Beyonce or Netflix or Nike or LeBron James or whatever, right? She looks at some something popular or something cultural mm-hmm. and then explains business to you by by speaking about things you love mm. which to me is the, the best way to do it why is it you know that mark has five apples i don't care about if mark has five apples mm. but if you tell me like beyonce has 12 grammys now <laughs> i'm listening you know so there you go that was a very interesting one and the other one would just be broke the roof record just a, not yeah. too long ago yeah 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 uh, would be frank Frank is um, is probably the only guy in the world I ever met that supersedes my creativity. This oh. guy is unbelievable. I had dinner with him two days ago. He's, Tell he's, me. Tell us. Um, he is, what I like about him, everyone calls him a creative, but he calls himself uh, an inventor, uh, an outfinder. Mm. He's not the, the, is he the guy on Twitter? No. I mean, I know everyone's on I'm Twitter. I'm sure he's sure. on Twitter, yeah. But tell, tell us more. So he, his dad invented stuff as well. So he's just very good with his hands. He can build anything and mm-hmm. make technical stuff or whatever. And he just comes up with funny shit. And then he also started a company called Notwerk, which is just an agency. But they do amazing work. Okay. And then he decided, no, nah, I'm way too 
there's too much creativity. So mm-hmm. he became an artist, which is now called Street Art Frankie. That's it, yeah. Um, mm. Which is sort of the Dutch Banksy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he just does mind-blowing stuff. But at a frequency, he does uh, like five high a week. level. You oh, know Jesus. what I mean? Like, wow. And all of them are impressive. And everything is fun. And him on a stage, yeah, he will tell you in 15 minutes what sounds like the history of a country. But it's a person. It's insane. He okay. invented things. He broke world records. He created the craziest products. He had the wildest parties. He... He, I can't love it. I well, can't I, tell it you. It says enough. Wow. It you know, says enough. Inspirational, yeah. crazy. And so you left the dinner. How? How did you? You went home and you went like, uh? Just like I always leave him. He, he was like, we we always talk till the last second. Mm. You know, we're having dinner. Yeah. We're talking. We're talking. We're talking while we're paying the restaurant. We're talking while we're putting. Do we really on the have to leave. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> we do this and that. And he's like almost on a bike, and I'm like walking away. We're still. <laughs> Yelling at each Holler. other. We should do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then every time I have dinner with him, like three or four connections come out because we tell each other ideas. Yeah, and then amazing. You're bouncing. He, he's always open. So he's like, I know a guy, I know a guy, I know a guy, I know a guy. And then boom, he just introduces you Love to it. everyone. Love it. And we do the same thing back. And that nice. energy, it's a very special guy. Oh, wow. He's a very special person. We'll definitely have to look him up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so the last and obviously not the least, and I think it's the, the closing off, I, legacy. Mm. But for someone who doesn't know who you are, and of course after watching this, they hopefully know you a lot better, what do you want or need or will live, leave behind? Um, I think I had enough fun myself. I don't, I'm not in the business of people should remember me at all, I don't think I need a hit record or no. Or you any, don't. You don't like need that. to. But as a person, not, yeah. 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 And, and so I switched way more into like when I was still career driven. I was very much into I need to be the number one. I need to win mm-hmm. everything and uh, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm out of that. So mm-hmm. now I'm I'm like, hey, what can we do? Can I come up with things that impact the world and stay impacting the world even when I'm not involved? And something like the avocado shows is brilliant because we changed the way people experienced food in the city and yeah. it's healthier and it's worldwide more fun and not has just experience. in the city okay, yeah. started here mm-hmm. um and now i'm looking at skybox and it's like yeah okay i run this place for now but even if i'm out and even if we put it in 10 other cities there will then be places where you know young professionals can go to get inspired forever because the system works mm. so for me if you talk about legacy is figure out products, services, systems, impactful things that can be there, stay there, and have impact forever. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, it's not, I'm not going to tear up. You <laughs> couldn't have said it better, I'm not joking. Um, your inspiration drives me, I love it. It's one of the reasons, besides, like I said, uh, you're the person that you know gives me the vibe. I know you inspire people. I wish you so much time because that's all to be more and more inspirational and take that holiday somewhere sometime you know you guys are going away i want to thank you for the time i can't wait for people uh, to hear we will put everything about ron simpson and skybox and all the companies um you know down below and um I thank you for your time because i know it's um, thank you precious good luck with the show i can't wait i love it thank you ron Thank you. So thank you for watching another episode of the Talk to Audrey show. Stay tuned for our next special guest coming very, very soon to you.